and welcome to Fighting Poverty, a special program of World Insight. Fighting poverty is a global cause, and in China, there are still more than 80 million people that are living under the poverty line. Every one of them has a story to tell, and every one of them have different reasons why they are still in poverty. That is why we are traveling here in the southern part of Gansu province, in the interior part of China, to meet with some of them and hear how hard they are struggling against poverty. Picturesque Gansu lies between the Tibet and Lowest Plateaus, a land kissed by the Yellow River, boasting a stretch of the ancient Silk Road. In ancient times, it was a key strategic outpost. Beneath the beautiful landscape, however, it is one of the poorest places compared to the rest of China. The rural population of Gansu live on limited land resources. Most of them have become migrant workers away for work. Only the oldest and the youngest still remain. Poverty have gripped their lives. We went to visit a family of three generations living in poverty in Baihe County on the southern part of the province. Great grandma, grandpa, and the youngest, Xue Lian, a primary school girl. Once I walked into their home, I understand immediately the complex feelings behind the poverty. Hello,我老婆。第一次上電視吧,哈。期待嗎? <笑> 你一会儿还要去田里干活吗?今天。是。嗯。今天收什么?就收。就收菜籽。菜籽啊。嗯。菜籽收完以后怎么样? 家里歇着就是他那个病<笑> 最喜欢学习哪个课呀？嗯，喜欢学英语。真的啊？真的。跟我说两句英语嘛。嗯，我们这节目就是英文节目，说两句英语，全世界的人都知道你会说英语的。我来用问题问你啊。嗯，What's your name? My name is Pao How old are you? 好,说的不错 嗯,之前有我的爷爷和他奶奶。<笑> 
是我的一个，就是我的姥姥，嗯，在外边给我们寄钱。嗯，姥姥在哪儿啊？在睡觉。想姥姥吗？想。爸爸妈妈呢？爸爸妈妈都不要我了。从小就跟爷爷长大的啊？嗯，是啊。几岁跟爷爷一起长大？我从两岁的时候就和爷爷和他奶奶就在一起生活了。他奶奶越来年纪越大了，怎么办呀？嗯，我想就长大以后就照顾他。现在你也在照顾他呀？嗯。你。不仅上学，我听说啊，嗯，还要做家务吧？是。做什么事情？平时在家里洗衣服、做饭，帮家里打扫一下卫生。还要种田吗？嗯，是。家里的田在哪儿啊？嗯，有的就在那山上，嗯，大概要走半个小时或者。或者十几分钟。嗯，假如对面呢，是有爸爸妈妈，也有新疆的姥姥，你要说什么话吗？我想，我想你不要走了，回再回到这个家里来。也许他们会听见。还有别的吗？嗯，回来，我们一家人团圆。爷爷呢？如果遇到困难了怎么办呢？嗯，我就去挑战，不放弃。雪莲 is a tough girl. After our talk, she took me quite further into the mountains, where her family owns a small piece of land. There are quite a number of kids like Xuelian in her village. I spent the whole afternoon and evening with them that day. They went to the same school, Baika County Central Primary School. The next morning, after a few hours on the road, it was already noon before we finally reached the school gate. We are here at the、uh, primary school of Baika County. Noon time, the students just all from school. This is、uh, one of those typical primary schools in the interior of China. One thousand students studying here, coming in six different levels and grades. And this is the noon time for them. The meal is free to the students, thanks to the government subsidies, to make sure the kids will not go hungry anymore while in school. Can I have lunch with you? Can I? 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 Can I?
好。After enjoy lunch with the students over here, I'm gonna meet some of the teachers. Three young volunteers enrolled from all over China by a program called Teach for China. Among them, Yu Qing, a young woman who returned to China a year ago after finishing her graduate school with an American university. Do you have class in the afternoon? Yes, I do. Okay. What time? I think it starts at two o'clock. Two o'clock in the afternoon. Yes. Can I? Secretively drop in in your class. Welcome. Yeah, can I do that? Yeah, sure. terrific. Okay, let's enjoy lunch for now. <laughs> okay, I went with Yu Qing in the afternoon to a calligraphy class, a math class, and eventually ended up in her English class. Half the class doing calligraphy, half the class doing reading. Yeah, sometimes they can choose if they haven't finished their homework today. I see. They can do their homework. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> Next class is where? Oh, it's right over there. Okay. And it's second grade. Oh, class homework. one, grade two. Teacher who we met, Yu Qing, is to give an English class later in the afternoon. Class two, grade five. So let's get in. I try to find a seat. Hey, 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 I think I'm gonna sit here in the middle of the students. These students are quite nice. They're not shy at all. I didn't expect this. There must be a lot of communication going on between them and their teachers. Back to school. Really lovely. Class begins. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Sit down. 好，同学们，今天我们来上这个学期的最后一节。课，嗯 ，our last English class. Are you ready? Yes. Okay. Read aloud the words. 我们来朗读一下第一单元的单词。出发点 ，exercises. 做早操 ，over walk, over walk. 去散步。啊，怎么念这句话？谁可以来回答我？啊，这么多句什么？杨晶，你来念一下上面这句。What do you finish class? You the morning. Wonderful. Can you answer? 你可以回答吗 ？I finish class at one o'clock. Very good. Sit down. 好 ，Number two， 第二句话。Who can read? 好，我们请杨强强。I open one TV and sleep in half. Very good. 好，我们现在来回忆一下。Who remembers? 这是在干什么？李蕊。Dancing. Dancing. They are dancing. 对不对？对对、啊。他们在干什么？在干嘛？跳舞。好、啊，在跳舞。Sit down。好，找一找这里面有没有你自己啊？有没有自己？有。啊，这是我们上个学期用表演来学习新的单词。What are they doing？ 他们在干什么？在干什么？唱歌。唱歌啊 ！How to say that in English？ 怎么说？他们正在唱歌。They are singing. Whose picture is it？ 看到照片之后，看看你认不认识照片是谁的 ？Whose picture is this？ 这是谁的照片啊 ？Miss Lee。不是 Miss Lee， 这是谁 ？Doctor Lee， 记不记得啊？解忧医院的照片啊，这是我戴着帽子给同学们上课的照片。好，这是谁？这是谁 ？Miss Lee。不对，这也不是 Miss Lee， 这不是李老师了，这是李大厨啊、呃，李大厨，还记不记得上课的时候给你们做的吃的？记得。谁吃过我做的 hamburger？ hamburger 谁吃过？啊，王文佳，你一个人吃了？那不给别人分一点呢？好， what's this？ what's this？ 这是什么？ hamburger。把它拍上来， hamburger。what's this？ what's this？ Hot dog 是什么食物 ？Hot dog， 热狗。What's this？ 这是什么 ？Sandwich
language. They are now trying to write down a letter that they will send to the teacher later. This is a story that is supposed to reflect a year's life in school. I uh, try to look around, but it seems that um, he doesn't want to let me look at it. There must be a lot of secrets there. It's wonderful that they're learning about the ways to communicate through the letter in this regard. And certainly a lot of them seem to have a lot to say because they're all very busy. I don't know what kind of letter I would write to Yi Ching. Class is over. Goodbye, everyone. Sit down. 好，这节课我们就上到这儿啊，请同学们做眼保健操。<laughs> full of letters your students wrote yeah, to you. Yeah, full of letters. Yeah. What are those like? Uh, I can show you. So this is a letter from a student who just transferred to this school last year. So she came at the time, at the same time as I came. So she wrote, um, when I first came here, I wasn't familiar with this place. And the first lesson was from my English teacher, which is very kind. Oh. <laughs> That's so sweet. No, they are very sweet. Yeah. Each of them, every one of them. You got a lot of letters. Uh -huh, yeah. <laughs> what is it like? Last class. Yeah. I feel first time uh -huh. your students. Yeah. So you taught them for a year. Uh -huh. This is their last class. Yeah. I think they've changed a lot. When I came here, they couldn't really read aloud English. They were very shy at that time. But now I could see how brave they were, even in front of uh, in front of me and in front of other people. Even in front of our camera. Yeah, even in front <laughs> of the camera. It, it's kind of unbelievable. It's but I saw happen. you a little bit emotional at the end I of know. the class. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to control. <laughs> human, human nature. <laughs> yes. I could see Yu Qing needed a moment to calm down and reflect. She has a deep emotional bond with her students. At the end of the semester, it was hard to say goodbye. She is a strong-minded young woman who stayed in the village a whole year, cut off from her metropolitan life and peers. Eventually, I got to sit down with her in a quiet corner of the school. The last time I was in your class, I look around, everybody, maybe because the camera was in the <laughs> was so diligent. I didn't expect that. Because I, you know, in a primary school classroom, <laughs> everyone would, would have their little mind go off a little bit from time to time. But it was quite amazing. These kids work really hard, yeah. most of them. Mm -hmm. Did they tell you why? Well. It may sound like showing off, but <laughs> I think they like my English class. Mm -hmm. That's what they wrote it's down. It's not showing off, I enjoy it too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I think uh, you might think English is really far away from their life, but to be honest, to most of my students, English is their favorite subject. Mm. Why? It's not that hard compared with math. <laughs> and um, they could feel the sense of achievement in learning English. 
um, and because I'm always trying to bring happiness and joy to my classroom, I think they enjoy being here, even though they would not uh, concern, they are not concerned about why am I learning English if I if I'm not going to use it someday. But I think they are enjoying the process of learning, and that's very valuable to me. Mm. In your last class, you were reviewing some of the classes and homework you've given to them mm -hmm. earlier. I noticed that one of them is about the Western food. <laughs> yeah. You teach them how to pronounce those words mm -hmm. yeah. and what those are about. Yeah. Hamburgers, sandwiches, fried chicken. <laughs> but you know, the kids were not reacting as actively as, let's just say, they were doing morning exercises, you know, try to learn how to say this, mm -hmm. or having lunch, having dinner. There seems to be a disconnect mm -hmm. between their real life mm -hmm. and what you taught them, mm -hmm. particularly at least for that specific, for those specific words. Yeah. I don't know if you noticed that. Uh, yeah, I absolutely do. That's that's the, exactly the reason why I brought my kitchen into the classroom to let them know what it is like, a hamburg what a hamburger looks like, what a sandwich looks like, and I hope that they could taste it. And um, actually, you know, very in it's very interesting that in the last class they wrote the letters to me about their most unforgettable class during the school year, and half of the students wrote down the lesson that. I was teaching them hamburgers and sandwiches. Wow. Yeah. It's very shocking to a lot of people, I guess. It was. Did they say why? Um, they said it, it was very interesting. And before that, they only know that the English words are only vocabulary that appears on the textbooks. But in that lesson, they know it's real. It's very real. I could touch it, I could see how it was made, and I could taste it. And that's real life experience. Even though I think one boy grabbed most part of it. <laughs> <laughs> well, they were watching. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they were watching. They smell it. <laughs> it's also very real. But you know, that's one thing. The other thing is, when I say heavy, is that on the one hand, you believe education is going to alleviate them out of poverty. Mm -hmm. By the same time, it is not you who is the only factor playing a, an impact in their lives. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of other factors as well. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, in class, the one that I just mentioned, for example, about sandwich and also mm -hmm. hamburgers, you see this curiosity, but you also realize that the reason for this curiosity is their lack of access to these materials, to these foods. Mm -hmm. I mean, as a teacher, how do you react to that? Not in class, but you know, when you go back to your dorm, little room, just mm -hmm. inside the campus, how do you digest that every day? It's very hard, <laughs> um, but I always believe that I'm planting a seed in their heart, and maybe one day, I mean one day, it will grow, and it will bloom. <laughs> It will grow to be a tall tree or whatever, but I believe that life is going to be beautiful because I know what seed I am planting, and I believe that process. I know a lot of people are talking about poverty alleviation. Um, well, I think education is definitely part of the methods to do that, um, although it will be a very long process because you cannot see how your, the seed that you plant grow in one day. It may be five years, it may be ten years, but I do believe that sometime, someday it will grow. Yeah. But once again, I want to ask you that question that I mentioned earlier, which is, you know, how are you going to digest it? Because this is not a process that you yourself is mm -hmm. the only one that's going to have an impact on their lives. Mm -hmm. They receive signals, messages coming from all over, from outside school, mm -hmm. in the market, when they go to the streets, when they go back to their villages, when they manage to maybe one day visit their parents in the cities. So 
what you have shaped for them mm -hmm. proactive reacting um, being optimistic yeah. will it work I, I think it will I, I still believe that well um, I know that they will encounter many challenges um, sometimes I ask myself what will happen when they go to um, middle school will they still remember what what I taught them in primary school will that work sometimes I question myself but if there's still one opportunity that it could work I would grab it and I would I would not let myself I would not l let myself just go and see that happen so I'm glad to be part of it mm -hmm. even though I'm I might not be the one who will see that day but I would be very grateful that I could I could be part of it you are here because you're part of the teach for China program yes and you volunteer to be in that program mm -hmm. it's mainly for young people to join particularly those freshly graduated from universities whether in China or mm -hmm. overseas yeah to join and teach in China's interior ch areas two years at least yeah two-year program but once you're here life is very different <laughs> yeah how did you adjust from the very beginning wow that I mean you were a long story <laughs> you were a city girl yeah your family well off I mean <laughs> at least the middle class yeah and then you went to St. Louis you know get to know the United States mm -hmm. get the graduate school done coming back um, what is this adjusting like for you well just to jump out of your comfort zone <laughs> every time I tell myself what was it like at the very beginning it was hard you know I used to shower every day but <laughs> it's definitely not possible here yeah and um, Carry solar energized, right? <laughs> yeah. Solar energy. Mm -hmm. yeah. It but depends, depends on the weather. weather. <laughs> <laughs> and um, here I have to share my very, already very small dorm room with another st a teacher. Mm -hmm. And every, every, every part of my life, it's like brand new <laughs> at yeah. the beginning. Your hair was here. <laughs> yeah, now it's here. here. <laughs> Beautiful hair. <laughs> but you never get it uh, cut? <laughs> well, the real reason is that I've never found a good place to get it cut. <laughs> so we just let it go. <laughs> it takes you hours, one day almost, to travel to really to the big cities, right? Mm -hmm. um, like, it's, it, it would take me three hours to get to the town. Mm -hmm let alone the city yeah so just forget it <laughs> is that yeah I think now I'm enjoying I'm enjoying the environment I mean I'm familiar with my daily life now so nice shoes too <laughs> well bought them online right. yeah. how long did they take to deliver here uh, like seven to ten days into the school yeah into the, uh, the village into the village mm -hmm. and then you go and pick it up yeah how do you compare your life with your peers, let's just say, who graduated at the same time with you from St. Louis? Yeah, uh, I think I lose some of the life experiences that they could have, but I also gained more. They're probably in consulting firms or investment banking? Well, but they sleep less. <laughs> they worry more. <laughs> and I think I'm happier here. Uh, I don't have to worry about money. I don't have I don't have to worry about the traffic or um, or um, you know just the city <laughs> the city life and you want to continue yes I do uh, I still have one year to go in the program and after that I still want to be a teacher in Meili school also in a vill village area I see yeah. but your parents I would assume they were a little bit concerned <laughs> because to them their generation your Asia probably is the time to think about family life, right? but yeah. plan for the future. Yeah, I'm working on that. <laughs> I am really am. <laughs> um, I think when I'm, when I am growing, my parents are growing too. They are being more understanding and supporting. They actually visited me last month. I think that's a signal of them accepting my life and my job. How do they like it? Well, they. Did not like every minute of the journey, but I think in the end they enjoyed that. What did they enjoy the most? And what do they dislike the most? I took them to the village where my students live. 
and they had lunch with my student at their home, and it was very sweet. Um, the parents, uh, the grandparents, made noodles, the local food, for my parents, and they were talking, even though in different dialects. <laughs> but they were trying very hard. Um, they were really trying to understand each other, mm -hmm. and that's very cute, actually. Mm. Yeah, it is. It sounds it, cute. It is. <laughs> Yu Qing, it's wonderful that you and some of your peers volunteer to teach in the poverty-stricken areas. But on the other hand, have you ever thought about it? I mean, you are here only for only two years. But the kids stay here probably their whole life. Is it fair? Well, it depends on how we see fairness. How do you see it? I think it's giving them the opportunity, the equality of opportunity. Like everybody has a chance in this. In, in his or her life. Everybody deserves that. So I'm here, even though I will leave in two years, in one year actually from now, but more people will come and they will take over my job and they will continue what I do here. So I, I actually don't worry about what, it will, what happens after I leave, after I go. But in questioning about these possibilities or these methods, suggesting that one teacher stay with one school for two years. Mm -hmm. Time to adjust, getting along, getting into the situation, time to leave. So they argue whether it's about enriching the lives like teachers like you, rather than really enriching the lives on a consistent basis for the children here. On the other hand, there's also a difference between you and the local teachers. Mm -hmm. You coming from St. Louis, been to the United States, coming from big cities, children are fascinated. But the local teachers are being left here with the regard from the children as if they were inferior and they were not as fascinating as you guys. So people also wonder whether that is fair or not? What do you think? Oh, I think I've never, I never wanted to let them feel inferior to whether me or other fascinating people in the city. I think I want them to be that person who they think is fascinating. Mm -hmm. So, um, well, I, I think I'm opening a window for them to let them know what the other what the outer world looks like. You mean for the children? For the children. If they think that's fascinating, I would encourage them to pursue that. Why not? Why not give it a try? I mean, if you say that they don't have the access to uh, keep going, um, or I say, after I leave, other people will come, and a lot of people will offer different resources for them, and I would not let that opportunity go. I mean, I would not just stay here and do nothing. So I, I would still try. Mm -hmm. And um, the other question about the, the difference between me and the local teachers, I think um, we are here and we are teaching uh, the students in our way, and that's also an interaction between us and the local teachers. I think we are learning from each other. They have very good class managing skills, and we have um, some new teaching methods, and we are interacting as well, and that's also a diversity to the school. I think a good school is a diverse school in the end. So yeah, that's how I perceive that. At the end of the day, do you think your students will enjoy better their lives than even you do? Well, I hope that. <laughs> and I believe most of them can feel the happiness that they could get from the learning and from being with us, being with teacher and being in school and I want to give them the sense of achievement, and I think that could accompany them for a longer time. Mm. What are you telling them about money? Hmm. Well, sometimes... Um, As this is an extremely poor area. Mm -hmm. um, well, they are still very young, and uh, it actually doesn't take too much money to come to school now because the education is tuition-free, and um, they have um, other uh, 
uh, stipends from the government, uh, such as the lunch and the breakfast. So um, I would tell them to use their money wisely, even though it's not a big amount of money. Um, I want to. I want them to learn how to manage their financial earnings from a very young age. And so after that, when they grow up, even when they go into the cities, when they do have more money, they would use them more wisely. At the end of the day, you have to leave. One year to go. Yeah, one year to go. Have you ever thought about what it's going to be like one year from now for the real last class? Yeah, I think it's going to be very hard <laughs> and very emotional. I know, I, I could feel that even, even now <laughs> after one year because, um, you know, summer break is a long time and some students are already feeling uh, very emotional <laughs> when they will not see me for such a long time. So I, I could imagine what it will like in one year. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> you are giving your last class in the morning. Yeah. Uh, what was it like? A lot of kids are crying, <laughs> and I was crying too. Um, what do you think they're crying about, and why did you? Because uh, next year I will not be their English teacher. I will uh, teach another class, and they know they could not be my students for a sixth grade, and I think that's what they feel sad about. Uh, for me too. I know it's a loss for both of us, mm -hmm. but I think the relationship is still there. And my letterbox is always open for them. Yeah. Life is always saying hi and saying goodbye, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Mm -hmm. I think learning how to say goodbye is also part of growing up. I'm looking forward to the next opportunity of saying hi to you again. <laughs> Me too. Yuqing, what a pleasure. Thank you so much for what you have done. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Education is the most powerful tool to change the world. In this case, for Yu Qing and her students, that is a good thing. That has been once again confirmed to me by the headmaster of the school, who had been teaching and working in the primary school for decades after studying in a local normal college. 学习上学真的能改变咱们孩子的命运可以啊这个是没有含糊的不能含糊的一点我就是靠读书然后考上师范然后回来当老师这就改变了自己的命运啊真棒现在就是我们教育我们的孩子就是刻苦读书改变自己